Folks, this is Book Talk with Corbin. I'm your host. We have a returning guest with us, a good friend of the show, Brother uh, Matt Singleton. Uh, he's been with us hey. before. Guys, I want you to go to the website, booktalkwithcorbin.com, and you should find at least two, three other interviews we've done with him. Really good interviews, and I want you guys to check them out. And not only to check them out, but I'd like for you to like them, hit like, it's very important that you, you hit the like, and then two, that you share it with other people. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We're on YouTube, youtube.com, Book Talk with Corbin. Today, folks, again, I, I, I'm going to take a little different, take the show to a slightly different direction than what I've done in the past. I, I usually do politics and culture, and uh, I usually do politics and culture. But in every so often, though, I got to sort of bring it down to talking about real, I guess you might say real life issues, not real life issues, but talking about spiritual issues, spiritual questions from a biblical perspective. And my go to guy for that is Brother Matt. You know, if, I, if there's something that's really pressing on my mind, something I really think my listeners need to, to hear and grapple yeah. with, I go to Brother Matt. Brother Matt, appreciate your time today. Thank you, brother. Folks, today we're talking about covenant. What is a covenant? What's a marriage covenant? What's a covenant wife? What's a covenant husband? And to the Christian men, how do you find a covenant wife? Uh, I think part, and I don't know if you agree with this or that, Brother Matt, but I, I, you know, for myself, you know, I've done a lot of quote unquote dating and you know, after a few years, you break up, and and sometimes it's who who cares type breakup. Other times, it's very painful because you want to maintain a friendship with the with the woman yeah. at least. And you know, and the woman they sometimes get upset because like, oh, I invested all this time and effort into you, and and then of course, you know, there's there's the thing uh, a lot of Christians don't want to openly talk about, but. Many times when we're doing that dating thing, we're engaged in fornication, knowing it's a sin. I mean, can yeah. take you to the scriptures and show you this is a sin. And yet we still do it with justification that, well, you know, we'll get married later and it, it will be OK. Or and sometimes it's it's flat out and spoken. Well, I want to see I want to test everything out to make sure it's OK before we get married. Brother, let's let's go now. Let's go ahead and get started. What is a covenant, brother? Go ahead. Go ahead. So basically, the original institution and the original uh, relationship was um, Adam and Eve, man and wife. And essentially, um, it says that you know, as a man leaves his father and mother and he cleaves to his wife, uh, the two uh, become one flesh. And so there is a bonding process there. When we talk about a covenant, a covenant is like a contract, okay? You have a very strong sealed agreement. The difference is, is that in a contract, if the other party doesn't live up to uh, your expectations, then you can get out of the contract. You know, if they break the contract, then you're out. Well, when it comes to a covenant, you should be doing everything that you are promised to do regardless of how they behave. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are some exceptions. Um, if you um, have to deal with uh, someone cheating on you and adultery, that is allowed for a divorce to happen. If um, you have uh, someone who is an unbeliever and they simply leave you, then um, that is, you know, you know, you, you have mercy, you know, as far as dealing with that. Uh, when we talk about divorce, Divorce really is, um, in the ancient language, it's about like leaving, like leaving their house, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I think when we talk about people in the covenant, uh, you know, I want to go, you know, to some basics. And I'll start with the guys first. I know that we're going to be dealing with girls a lot here, but, uh, you know, we have to, you know, if the guy's the head of the, the household, then he's the first of the responsibility. Mm -hmm. So... A man has, you know, we'll call it three P's, okay? The three P's that, I'm going to talk topically here. There are three P's that you want to live up to as far as virtues. 
You need to be the provider, the protector, and the priest. Now, the provider, I will say this. If any normal guy, regardless of religion, one is lonely and he needs a woman, I say this. Buy a car, buy a house, and buy a bed. Now, I'm not guaranteeing you'll be the woman in your dreams, but there's going to be some woman who will, you know, want to join you at some point um, because they need a provider. Um, in fact, I'll even say this, the liberated feminist woman replaces business or the government with this provider figure. So th this is always a need. Um, but yeah, you, you have to do that. You have to be responsible. You have to be the provider. When men are not the provider, they lose power. And then all, all of a sudden they realize, well, hold on, there's nothing going on here, you know? And so um, if you're a leader, then, you know, they ha there has to be something behind that. So they have to be a provider. They have to be a protector. I mean, there's some of this is kind of basic, you know, you think defender life or, or whatever, but also there's just a general need. I don't like my wife. She always says this. She's just like, you know, she doesn't want me to work night shift because uh, she wants me at home because she feels secure. Okay. okay. Women have a natural need of security Women have a um, nature, you know, to where they're going to be the nurturers and, you know, the man is going to be the head of the family. They're going to be the heart of the family. Okay. And so being that they worry, that's part of their nature. They're always worrying because they want to take care of the kids and want to make sure everything's fine in the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. So essentially they need a man that's going to provide security. Okay. Now, if you are a man who is insecure and you are going back crazy or whatever, that's not good. Okay. That's not what a, a real man is going to act like. So a provider and a protector and a priest, the priest, you know, and we've really forgotten this concept, but we have to be the spiritual leaders. And not only is there a spiritual leader, but I think that when it comes to uh, the wooing of the wife, you have to have a vision for your family and your life, and you have to sell that vision. If the man is not capable of selling the vision of his life, then whether or not it's his fault or her fault, okay, but if, the, if, if she is not sold on that vision, they will not have a happy marriage. Hmm. If they have a marriage, okay, it, it, it really comes down to that. Uh, if she looks at him and says, wow, I see what he is and I see where he's going and I'm, I'm into that. You know, I think about like um, Jerry McGuire. OK, <laughs> she wasn't really impressed with Tom yeah. Cruise in many aspects, but she said, I know what he wants to be, you know. And so she sees his vision and therefore that, you know, that is the chain that locks the love. OK, she has to believe what he's selling. You know, and you have to make sure that your product is good or it doesn't seem to sell very well. Mm -hmm. So that is the thing is a man. You have to have that vision and that leadership. And when you do that will, you know, keep the home fires burning. That's the long run relationship. OK, short run relationships don't have that. But the long ones do. Now, um, we are experiencing, as a culture, we are experiencing a huge tremor and backlash thanks to the feminist movement, okay? This generation of younger women are not taught, and you just watch the commercials. Watch the commercials. You'll see what they're being brainwashed with, okay? You don't need the man. How many hit songs are, I don't mean need the man since he be gone, blah, 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 okay? Mm -hmm. They're like, you know, it's all about you, and your vision is this, and you need to live your life, you know, with this great expectation of become an industry leader, become all these things, okay? They don't tell you to become a mother. It, it is counterintuitive. So the girls are brainwashed into that direction. They might be good girls who reject it, but they are all being pushed into that direction. Some of that is the fault of the previous generation of men because we followed the Hugh Hefner playboy philosophy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not as individually, but you know, our culture went into that and said, Hey, why do I need to be burdened by marriage and family? Okay. So now since, you know, all this generation of women has been broken hearted. Now it's kind of like a vengeance type of deal where, you know what, we're going to be the players. We're going to go out there and do all this stuff. 
that's not to say that like there aren't uh, women in our culture that got their head on straight. There are plenty of those, but they're also kind of, it's few and far between from what it used to be. Hmm. And, you know, I've seen guys, I know guys who right now they are looking for wives overseas, you know, um, some in Europe, but now it's kind of being more in Asia because there's a lot of conservative Christian women in Southeast Asia. And so um, I know several fellows who've, you know, got girlfriends or got wives or whatever overseas. Uh, that's their answer. Sometimes they, you know, they might pick a, a older generation, you know, like a, a, an older woman who has her act together, all that kind of stuff. But this is definitely a legitimate problem. Um, I don't want to make any judgment. I mean, you know, as guys, we're going to see every bad woman out there. Is, you know, girls are going to see every bad guy out there. Mm-hmm. You know, but basically, uh, that's kind of the situation. Now, um, let's see here. Going back to um, some of these issues, uh, a man needs uh, he needs love, but he also, more importantly, he needs respect. I remember I was dating a girl many years ago, and for me, it was like, well, she's not judging me, so I don't judge her. I'm not worried about it. And my sister-in-law said, Matt, when are you going to find a, a woman that respects you? Mm. And that just, you know, that really freaked me out. I was like, wow. You know, I just didn't think in those terms. I mean, she wouldn't like this girlfriend wasn't really bad to me or anything, but you know, she wouldn't go to church or anything like that. And she just said that she's like, we gonna find a woman that respects you. And a lot of times we want an idol, you know, the pagan man wants to make, um, romance, a, a virtue, and then the woman, the idol. Okay. And that does not work. That's not true love. That is just fantasy. Okay. So you don't need a woman who's a fantasy. You need the woman who's real for your real life. And that woman is going to be somebody who respects you, who loves you. They might not always do it with a smile because sometimes you're not worth smiling at. (laughs) We've got our issues too, right? But basically, um, I'll be honest with you. I knew that my wife right now was going to be my wife when uh, she helped me work a grill for about three weeks. My parents owned the grill. They went to Europe uh, for some exchange students that they knew. And during that time, we had to work uh, every day. And she would work, uh, she'd get tips, but otherwise she was working for free, helping me out. And I just knew, I was like, this, this is a woman that has integrity. You know, uh, if I sneak up her, on her, okay, I can pop into the room, sneak up on her, she'll be shocked, and she'll have like Charles Stanley playing on her tablet, okay, or she'll be doing a devotion or praying, okay. This is a godly woman, indoors and outdoors and everything like that. And so when I find that, I find something that lasts. Um, When we think of sex, now let me give you this theory. I believe that sex is a physical manifestation of spirituality. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And when we talk about sexual sin in Corinthians, it says that this sin is special because it's a sin against your own body. You know, as you are the man, the man has his own heritage, and you are playing games with your heritage when you deal with sex. If you want to fornicate and uh, basically procreate because you fornicated, then you are saying, I'm going to create a baby who does not get properly raised. That's mm-hmm. what you're doing. You're, you're playing the hand of God. And, um, you know, sex has to be something that is controlled and, um, I think that, you know, I did, uh, unfortunately, I had a uh, early marriage uh, to another woman and she was much younger and basically not, and I'm really want to be careful here because, you know, bygones be bygones and, you know, I'm happy, you know, hope, hope she has a happy life. But essentially, you know, uh, she was not in, in to the, um, our relationship with all the best uh, hopes and dreams and all that kind of stuff. And since that, you know, she went to have, you know, the sexual romance and stuff. She liked the fact that like she could get away from her family and then kind of, um, you know, get her bills paid. And so, you know, I was providing all those things and it was great while it lasted. 
Mm -hmm. And essentially, 